Good morning, good morning, and welcome to MikeStewart.live. I hope folks are having a good holiday season this year in 2020, the craziest year I can remember in my life. Uh, but at any rate, uh, here it is, another episode of MikeStewart.live. And today uh, I want to talk about um, audio and things that I'm doing with audio and microphones for 2020. People are getting in their seats. Uh, I'm going to take a look and see here. We got, there's my good buddy, Dr. Uh, Bill Lampton. How you doing, Bill? Ready to hear some advice from you? Uh, um, no, no need to change on the snowball, but um, I'm going to talk about the different microphones available. Uh, any questions or comments, you can put them in the comments area and I will add them and address to them after I go through what I've prepared for you guys today. So anyway, um, number one, um, Here's what the, the presentation is called. It's called Microphones and Audio Editing and Sweetening Overview Primer for uh, 2020. And number one, I want to talk to you about when I started getting interested in audio as a kid. Obviously, uh, my hero was the Beatles and all those... Uh, uh, great recordings. And in fact, here's some pictures. You know, when I started reading uh, recording magazines and studying about audio back in the uh, 70s and in the 80s, um, I would see these pictures of uh, the Beatles. And they were all around this big, big microphone called a, and I found out it was called a Newman U47. And in fact, I learned that that was a microphone that was built in uh, Germany, was invented uh, back in the 30s and 40s. Um, by Telefunken, and of course, all those great Frank Sinatra records. You can see there's a picture of Frank Sinatra. Um, more importantly, uh, you know, what was it about this microphone? Why did they use such a large microphone to do the vocals? Well, we all learned early on that large diaphragm um, tube microphones uh, and condenser microphones, those were the type of microphones that were the best for recording the human voice. Uh, and of course you can see that's, uh, you know, who, who my mentors were using. So, you know, I thought, well, I'm going to, I want to try to get me one of these U 47s. Well, as you can see, I just recently looked at, this is a used U 47, um, $17,000. It's, uh, for sale right now today, a U 47 vintage Newman, like uh, the ones the Beatles use and like the ones, uh, Frank Sinatra used. And I thought, well, Seven, you know, and they, you can get them for around five thousand dollars, four to five thousand dollars, and evidently because this is a vintage, old, original, uh, it commands a higher price. This is a little out of my uh, comfort zone of paying that kind of money for a microphone. I said, there's got to be, um, got to be another uh, way of using microphones that's not that expensive. So let's talk about the different microphones that are available today and the different technologies that you can use. You know, well, here's one of the things. Mics are better today and they're cheaper today. Um, these are some of my favorite microphones uh, that are what are called USB microphones. And, you know, one of the tried and true microphones um, that I'm, I'm speaking over right now is the USB, I mean, the Audio-Technica 2020. That's it on the left there. Uh, and then the Yeti Snowballs. Uh, Yeti Snowballs uh, make all kinds of microphones. Those are fine microphones and they're USB microphones. A uh, microphone I recently bought is called the Rode NT Mini. That's it right there in the middle. And I am really blown away. 99 bucks. Uh, that's the microphone I bought to put in my computer bag to take with me. So if I need to do any computer audio or uh, live streaming or anything that I need to do, uh, I have that portable little microphone. So if you've not bought a microphone, I am blown away with the quality of the NT uh, Rode, R-O-D-E Mini. That's the one in the middle. And then a lot of folks, a lot of people are using what are called XLR microphones. And the reason I've got that up there is you can see the cables down there at the bottom that have the uh, three pins. Um, I'll put my mouse over it here. You can see right there, those, uh, for those of you watching the video, and if you're listening to the podcast, um, an XLR connector is not USB. It, you have to have a mixer 
to uh, plug into your computer or any kind of device. But uh, these are traditional, uh, the way microphones were built, you know, for years and years using the three pin XLR connector. And that is a sure uh, microphone and it's a great one. In fact, I'm going to buy one of those. I still have an Audio Technica 2020. That's what I'm talking on right now. Uh, if I was to pull up my video right here, you could see, you can see that, um, let's see if I'll bring it over here. I can't see. There it is. That's the microphone I'm talking on right now. And it is still a great, great microphone. So, um, We've kind of talked about microphones. That little blue box there, that is what's uh, the Shure microphone needs what's called a preamp booster. And, and so in other words, XLR for most applications is really a more advanced level. You can do just fine with either the AT2020 USB, any of the Yeti, uh, like the Snowball Blue or the Yeti, like that one. And now this new NTI Rode. For 2021, that's one I was pretty impressed with. Now, computer software is it's it's soft, it's free, uh, and it's cheap. Um, a lot of folks love Audacity. Uh, Audacity works on a Mac, works on a PC. Uh, there's a gazillion tutorials for Audacity on the internet. Uh, you can do amazing work with Audacity. Uh, I'm not a fan of it because I started with on PC with Sony software, Audio Studio. They're now up to version 14. And then, of course, if you're on a Mac, GarageBand comes on all Macs for free. And GarageBand is amazing software. So if you're on Mac, uh, GarageBand or Audacity are both great uh, resources. They're both free. Um, when it comes to audio on a PC, I am going to be demoing and showing you Audio Studio. Um, I'm still using Audio Studio because I've been using it for years. There's nothing I can't do with Audio Studio, and that's the softwares I recommend. And let me get my slide here to change. Now, these are the basic audio skills that you've got to, to master. Number one, you need to get the good microphone working with your computer, and then you need to know how to hit the record button. And then we're going to talk about marking mistakes uh, and the ways I used to do it uh, before software got uh, more uh, advanced. And then I'm going to talk about normalization and then the format to save audio for the Internet, which is uh, especially what I call the podcast resolution, which is 44.1, uh, which is the resolution or the quality, 16-bit, 128 bits per second. 16 bit is there's there's higher bit rates. 16 bit is perfect for podcasts and internet audio. And uh, 128 is what's called the stream rate. That's the internet connection you need to have for this audio to stream. So I'm going to pull up my um, camera right now. I'm going to stop showing. The, and this is what we used to call a clicker. We used to use this before software would mark it. In fact, this is from my old web design company here you can see soundpages.com and what this thing would do would make a click and that's how we used to mark mistakes and um let me go ahead and share my screen on soundforge here we go or audio studio this is what i'm used to using and i'm going to do th these basic demos of how you mark and edit uh, in an audio ed editing program. And pretty much all of the same audio programs work exactly the same way. So, for instance, right up here in the corner, I have a record button. All programs are going to do that. And let me show you. You hit record. And one of the things that you can do, you know, you should have some sort of level meters. These right here, green going up and down, are letting me know that my microphone is working. And when I hit the record button right here, this red button, it will start recording. So let me show you how you start recording. I am now recording audio for a podcast. I am now recording audio for a video voiceover. I'm now recording narration that's going to be an audio book. Any, oops, I made a mistake. 
I did a click that marked it. I did a thumb snap that marked it. And then on my keyboard, I can hit the letter M for mark. That's what software added years later. Now let's close this or stop it. You can see there that right there was the clicker. And that right there was my thumb snap. And then down there on the end, the, the um, letter one is the software marking. So the whole purpose of making marks is that when you make a mistake, you, you do what's called a pickup. So in other words, I knew the mistake was here because I marked it. And then I know that right here is where the pickup is. So if I highlight the mistake and I go to edit and I cut it out, that takes out the mistakes. And if I made a mistake, I can undo it and bring it back. That's called non-destructive editing. And then until I save the file with my edits. So one of the things I always used to teach people to do is the first thing you want to do is save your file in a folder. So you'd make a folder for your project. So let's, we'll, I'll go here and do this now. Audio project, whatever you name it. And I go in here and I save whatever the name of this file is. This is demo podcast unedited. So in other words, I want to save an unedited 128 MP3. That's what I want to save. You, you could save it as what's called a wave or an AIF file at high resolution, but you don't need to. You're just taking up a lot of hard drive space. So if you save everything at MP3, 128 CD quality, whatever your program is, save it. Now you've got an unedited version. Now, if you make a mistake on your edits, you can always get it back. That's the reason I always did it that way. So I look at my marks. I don't even have to remember where the marks, uh, where the mistakes are, because I mark them with my either a clicker, my thumb snap, or some sort of uh, software annotation. And then when I cut out my prob uh, problems, and let's say that that was another mistake right there, and I cut it out. Now, I've, and I've, let's say I want to take out that blank space there. I highlight the blank space, and I cut it out, or I can delete it, clear it, whatever I want to. And now I save it again as a 128, and I call it name, something like Final Mix or Final Edit, whatever I want to name it. So now I've got both things. Now, one of the processes that I do with my audio is I do a process called normalize. And what normalize, most all programs will do this. It enables you to get it as loud as possible. See, it, if I don't know if you could tell it, but the the uh, I'll undo it here. You see, you watch those blobs of blue get bigger. And normalizing just gives you a little bit more volume. There's other processes, but that's the main thing that you want to be able to do is do, uh, you know, edit out what's bad, what's left is good. Basically, your markers let you know where the bad things are. You you might want to preview and then I'm playing them. You can hit play and make sure it's the right thing. And then you can either cut it. If you made a mistake, you can undo it and get it back. That's called non-destructive editing, like I said. So... Let me let me get out of this. I'm back here again. Like I said, there was my silly little clicker. That's what we used to use back in the uh, '90s when digital audio was first uh, was first, you know, invented, and there wasn't software to be able um, to uh, market. And then we'll go back over here. Let me share some more of my slides. Because I got a little bit more here. So just to review, this is what we went over. Record sound. Pretty easy. Mark the mistakes. A thumb snap. Let me go ahead and bring my camera up here to where you can see me when I do this. Thumb snap. I just get my fingers up here. I can mark a mistake like that. In other words, hello, I made a mistake. And you do what's called a pickup. Normalize and then save it as a 44.1 16-bit 128. Um, um, audio file. Now, uh, I'm going to go over here to my slides again.
and we got a few more things we want to talk about. Um, when it comes to sweetening, this is a little bit more of an advanced strategy, and this requires something uh, like a, a multi-track program. Uh, Audio Studio is a limited multi-track program. Um, now, in Audacity and in GarageBand, those are uh, multi-track programs, but I was a Sony fan, and so I learned Acid Pro. Now, you can get Acid um, Music Maker for about 49 bucks, and it's perfect if, if you're PC-based. Uh, but what the only difference between sweetening means that you're taking MP3 or WAV files or AIF files that you've recorded, and you're assembling them into a final mix of layers. And you can adjust the volume levels. You can bring in sound effects. Uh, you can bring in commercials and jingles. Uh, you know, it's one of the things that I've been doing with my uh, podcast is, you know, I edit those in. But, you know, one of the things that I love is recording interviews. And I use Join StreamYard to uh, record uh, uh, interviews because when somebody's hooked up to StreamYard cloud system, the very system I'm using right now, I can get a high quality MP3 between two people and then I can bring it into either Acid Pro or Sound uh, Audio Studio and uh, edit it. And then, of course, a lot of Internet marketers have Camtasia. You should own Camtasia if you're an Internet marketer. My gosh, there's so many things that you can do with Camtasia. And Camtasia is an amazing multi-track sweetening mixing program. It has, just like it has uh, multiple video tracks, you can have multiple audio tracks and adjust the levels, edit out, and assemble um, a program. So this is a, a good place to uh, talk about, uh, you know, the use of jingles. But why should you own a good microphone? Why should you learn to use these softwares? Well, number one, these are the skills that I think are needed for any business. A great microphone is so affordable today. Uh, the Rode Podcaster, the Rode NT, uh, the Audio Technica. When I started, you know, we were looking at uh, those thousand studio microphones that were just out of reach for us. They didn't make those kind of microphones for computers back in the day, but now they do. And what can you do with a great microphone? Well, you can do a podcast, a live stream like I'm doing right now, a YouTube and Facebook video content, product creation, uh, Camtasia recordings, audio and video commercials, um, Coaching, I do one-on-one -on -one coaching with my microphone, go to meetings, Zoom, Skype. And then, of course, I do one-on-one -on -one, uh, networking meetings to uh, build business. So owning a good microphone, uh, you know, it's there's no excuse for not owning a good microphone anymore. So with all that being said, uh, we're brought to you this morning by my good friends at AudioClause.com. Let's hear from AudioClause. Ho, 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 it's Audio Clause 2021, and you know what? I don't need this mask because we're doing it virtually and we're safe this way. I hope you're using your mask. I hope you're staying healthy and you're staying safe. But more importantly, you need to learn how to use online streaming audio and video like never before. Never has the world needed it more than now. And that's what I've got in this unbelievable Audio Clause $1 trial offer. Don't waste this time. You need to be virtual. You need to understand how to use a webcam and a microphone. And you need to know how to make video for the internet and community communicate with, with businesses and customers. And here this year, I've got an amazing bonus offer. I'll do a one-on-one -on -one virtual session with you in 2021 to look over what are your SERP terms and help you know how to use SERP terms to get found for your business like I do, like Mike MikeStewart.Live. Those are my SERP terms. You need to check them out. So get your mask, be sure to wear it. And ho, 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 stay safe, and let's have a better 2021. All right. Silly old Mike Stewart with his annual audio clause, but uh, I'd love to work with you. And uh, like I said, check out audioclause.com. The dollar trial expires Christmas Day. And we're going to go to the comments now and see if there are any questions. This is a great time for you to uh, um, be sure to uh, put in your questions. Uh, oh, I've got so many good friends here. Here's my good buddy, Jeff Herring. So glad you're here. And 
my good buddy, Carlin Bunting, all the way out there from grandcanyon.com, still using his AT2020 AT, AT, uh, AT USB. And folks, the world famous Chuck Boozer. Gee, Chuck, it's so good that you're, hope you're doing well. Hope you're staying safe. Uh, <laughs> just outdated itself. Sweet. I love that. My buddy up in, in the wonderful uh, uh, north of the border in Canada, Michael Creason, good to see you here. My pest control buddy. Hi, Michael. Good morning. You use the Road Podcaster and Adobe Audition. All great programs. All It hey, doesn't matter. Nobody at the bank says, what equipment did you use? Uh, let's see if there's any questions. Any uh, Carlin says, uh, still use... Uh, at your recommendation, most of mine gets simply edited in video and Camtasia now. Yeah, sure. I mean, th back when I started, uh, there was uh, there was only so many things you could use, but now there's so many great options. And folks, here is a internet marketing legend, Kurt. So good to see you here, man. Good to see you again, brother. Hey, let's catch up soon. And there's one of the most precious ladies in the world. Uh that's my daughter, Lindsay. And Lindsay, what's the platform for podcasts, WordPress? And we're going to be working on that. You've got the microphone. Hopefully you've got the computer. Maybe you can make those things happen. And thank you, Nina. Yeah, uh, this is all about making content and building an audience. In fact, every time I do these things, I see more people showing up live, which is so much fun to have this kind of interactivity. Uh Tom says he has no question. Well, I know, Tom, uh, a lot of this is basic stuff for you, but there's a lot of folks out there that may still be struggling with what microphones are cool, you know, what software is good, you know, what are the basics. And, uh, and of course, here's uh, Mikey says, I've been using the Blue Snowball, amazing microphone. In fact, um, I had a Blue Snowball, and I gave it to my good friend, recording legend Wayne Moss as a Christmas present. And that's why I replaced my blue snowball with, I thought, well, I'm going to try out this NT, uh, NT road and I, I love it. It's been great. So, um, thank you. That's my, my darling daughter. I'll call you later, sweetie. Uh, let's see here. Uh, it's great to know that audio video training I originally received from you is still foundational. Well, you know, one of the things Carlin is, the principles of editing, mixing, and sweetening, you know, they haven't changed since the invention of movies. I mean, the masters of movie soundtracks from the, I was, I was watching a, a movie on Netflix just recently. Um, and when I watched this movie uh, about, um, uh, God, what is the name? Uh, I forget the name. It's, it's not Matt, uh, Mart. Anyway, it's the guy who wrote Citizen Kane for George, um, uh, for, um, oh my goodness, I'm, I'm having a senior moment here. Um, Orson Welles, Orson Welles had this particular writer and they were just talking about all the soundtrack and all the sound mixing stuff that they did back in the thirties, back, you know, back, you got to remember, uh, movies were silent until about 1923, 24, somewhere in there. Uh, the first, um, sound movie was the jazz singer with Al Johnson. And then of course, steamboat Willie was a, a, a Walt Disney uh, audio um, movie. And so mixing of sound and um, Orson Welles. Thank you, Kurt. Golly. I, I can't believe how uh, the older I get. Uh, I think my hard drive is just running out of space here, but at any rate, um, uh, <laughs> Orson Welles. So uh, we're getting some questions here. Um, Michael says, uh, do you recommend for podcast hosting? I use Anchor FM. Uh, I like putting my audio up in my WordPress website, and I put my uh, uh, media files on Amazon S3 Cloud. That's my preference. A lot of people use Libsyn. A lot of people use um, Podbean. A lot of people use, um, uh, what's the other one? Not Podbean. There's... Um, there's Blueberry Hosting, Libsyn. There's a lot. There's a lot of good ones out there. But um, as long, you know, the only reason I don't want to put it on um, Anchor FM is I'm not sure if it allows you to um, um, use a WordPress blog with it, and that's what I'm a big proponent of. So um, uh, Anchor Anchor may be great. I just have my way of doing it, and I'm it works for me. 
and uh, at the end of the day, build an audience. And, and of course, whatever system you go with, um, you know, it's hard to move it. And what I like about by putting it on Amazon S3 and using WordPress, if I had to move it uh, to a different system, I wouldn't lose all my content. And I don't know what the terms of service are with, with Anchor. So um, not, not so sure about uh, uh, if there's any issues uh, with privacy. Uh, Maggie says, uh, concerned about privacy issues. I don't know of, of any that all I know is that that uh, when I keep a secure WordPress website and I put my files uh, securely up on Amazon S3, everything works the way I know it to do it. So it's it's kind of like, you know, what's the best microphone? What's the best camera? What's the best pod um, podcast uh, um, hosting service? If it works and it's affordable, um, that's all that matters. It's all that matters. Okay, and somebody says they're using uh, Captivate, which, quite honestly, I'll investigate it. I don't know. Uh, Mikey says Anchor is great. They make it easy, too. Well, that's good to know. So, folks, you know what? Um, pick whatever's best for you. So, let's see if we got any other questions here. Uh, you know, we are brought to you today by Mike Stewart Everything Club, but we got a deal going on at Audio Claws. And uh, thank you for that great recommendation. Is there any other um, questions that have anybody has here? Because we're getting close up to the half hour point. It's so great to see so many of my old friends. Kurt, give me a call sometime. I'd love to catch up to what you're doing these days. Good to see you, Maggie, Michael. Um, I got to remember that this does become my podcast, so I got to make sure it's not too visual. I tried to uh, describe everything in an auditory format. Um, I hope everybody's staying safe. I hope everybody is uh, getting used to going virtual. And of course, I just wanted to have a little bit of an update that, uh, you know, one of the things about um, what doesn't get old, what, what doesn't get outdated is good content never gets outdated. Uh, good microphones last a lifetime. Um, and then more importantly, uh, software changes. Software gets better. Computers get faster. You know, uh, one of the things about uh, uh, softwares and technology, they're constantly getting faster, better. And of course, whatever was good six months ago is now outdated. But the good news is, is content marketing is, I don't think will ever get old. Because uh, content marketing started with Gutenberg and the and the printing press, and so content marketing will always be there. Uh, good sounding audio uh, is always going to have a uh, um, a place. In fact, when I listen to old movies that were made, you know, go back and listen to The Wizard of Oz. That movie was made in 1939. You can hear the dialogue. You can hear the sound effects. You can, the music and the vocals, everything is, you know, it's amazing. We've been getting good professional quality audio because of good microphones and good audio pro, uh, processing and recording techniques since, you know, almost 100 years. Um, so, you know, uh, good audio starts with a good microphone and good strategies and good techniques. And that's what I wanted to cover today. Um more importantly, um, let's see, I've got one question here. It says, I need a good lapel mic for my phone and some vlogging. Any recommendations? You know, I have seen several Bluetooth um, cell phone lapel mics, and I haven't tested any of them. Um, there's a, a couple out there. They're different prices, and maybe I'll do a show on lapel mics uh, because I'm, I don't do a lot of out-in-the-field recording. Because because of COVID, I don't go out in the field that much anymore. <laughs> so, um, uh, but that that would be a good idea for a show. So, uh, Bill says, uh, 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 "Thank you. I, I love all these great comments. It's very supportive to to get this support from you guys. And um, you know, submit your questions to me by email. There's at uh, MikeStewart.live. There is a question submission uh, suggestions for things that you want me to cover in the future." And, um, you know, anything like that. So if that's, uh, I'm looking over the questions now. 
Looks like uh, nobody has any burning questions. So I appreciate you too. Another one of our sponsors, I want to uh, remind you, we're brought to you by DomainsYouControl.com and Dot Live Secrets. Uh, at Domains You Control, uh, I highly recommend that if you're going to do a podcast, that you um, get a Dot Live URL. In fact, this show is streaming at MikeStewart.Live. If you don't own your Dot Live URL, you know, be sure to consider to go to Domains You Control and own that dot live. And of course, if you want to call me and reach out to me, I publicly put out my phone number, 770-826-3662. Love to talk to you. And I'm going to end with what Maggie says. Merry Christmas to you and to all of yours. And thanks for watching this episode of Mike Stewart dot live. Oh,